Greetings, friends, and mostly enemies. I'm gonna learn you today. I'm part of a Facebook group for writers and people of that particular affliction. And I saw a question, a very insightful question, a question that struck at the very core of my sight. Am I allowed to do multiple POVs in multiple types? And so I figured we would do a video talking all about the types of POV you can have in a story. Let's go. So before we can even begin this discussion, first we have to establish what types of POV even exist. Keep in mind these are broad categories and you may know of a story here and there that doesn't really perfectly fit into any one of these, but in general these are the broadly accepted categories and I'd, I'd argue most narratives fit into one of these. So first, we have omnipresent omniscient narration. This is a type of third person narration where the narrator can follow any perspective. That is a living character, that is an inanimate object, that is narrating from up in the heavens. It's called omniscient narration for a reason. You know everything, you are everywhere, you know the whole story, you are sharing it with the reader as you choose. You could think of this as sitting down at a fireplace or by a river and an old man telling you a story. Then we have another type of third person narration called close third person. And this is where we're still removed from the character, but we follow them closely. We don't, as the narrator, know anything that the character doesn't know or is incapable of perceiving. So in third person narration, we're following one, two, however many characters, but we follow them as if we were there with that character. We know what they know, see, hear, smell, etc. In second person narration, the writer is actually writing to the person reading the book. I'm not quite sure how to describe it beyond that. I've never personally read any book that uses this style, and I don't personally use it, so I'm not the guy to go to for that. But that's not to say you can't do it, and obviously the great thing about doing this is if you're writing directly to the reader by using phrases like, so you see, my dear reader, then you get to pull the reader into the story and involve them much more directly and intimately. And obviously for certain types of narrative, for certain stories, that could be a huge advantage. And then there's first person POV. This is where we are following a character's perspective. We are essentially inside that character's head. In these kinds of narratives, you'll see a lot of I statements. I walked to the desk and picked up my knife. I strode out onto the battlefield to meet my enemy. We are with that character. We can jump around to other characters and be inside their heads. That's multi-person first. But in first-person narration, we're inside the character's head. We're experiencing the story with them. So to more specifically address the question at hand, can I use multiple perspectives if they're not all the same type of perspective. For example, mixing omniscient narration with two character perspectives. And I'd argue that yes, you can. I'd say you had to do it very well. They need to be distinct, they need to be well written, and they need to be very engaging. But I see no reason you can't do it if you do it well. With that being said, when you do something like that, that's obviously of a higher skill level, something that's kind of an undertaking, you are setting yourself up for a high risk, high reward situation. And so I would personally suggest if you're not totally confident, stick to all of your POVs being the same type of POV. As I said, if you are going to use multiple points of view, make sure that when you shift from one point of view to the next, it's crystal clear that you did. Unless that's not what you want. <laughs> Unreliable narrator can be a very effective storytelling device and having the perspective switch 
without necessarily letting the reader know the perspective has switched could be one interesting twist on doing Unreliable Narrator. But again, make sure it's done well and make sure it's a deliberate choice that has a purpose. And now my third point, what if you're a little bit further behind in your creative process? What if you don't know which type of perspective or number of perspectives is ideal for your story? Allow me to give you some basic guidelines that might help you decide just that. First, you need to decide and know if this is a character-driven story or a narrative-driven story. If it's a character-driven story, I would personally wager that first-person POV in single or multi or third person close single or multi is the way you're gonna want to go. Other side of the coin, if you have a plot driven narrative where the story is much less about the characters and much more about the events that they're swept up in, omniscient narration or second person narration in single or multi POV might be ideal for you. And that's obviously not to say you can't swap these around and play with them a little bit. In fact, as you get more skilled and experienced, I would actually encourage you to do it. No one should put baby in a corner or a box, creatively speaking. But we also need to make sure that we're capable of doing what we're doing well. If you're sitting there and asking yourself, well, what is a plot-driven narrative? There's tons of videos and articles talking about how to do a character-driven story and why character-driven stories are so good, but what's an example of a good plot-driven story? I would cite to you stories like Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings, where the story is much less about the individual characters and much more about the series of events and this massive epic scale of storytelling that those stories encompass. When we're picking our POV, we also want to consider what the goal of our writing is. If you're writing a horror novel, you are not going to want to write from the monster's perspective. At least, I'd wager you wouldn't. It's pretty hard to get a jump scare or build a horrific suspense when we see the monster stalking its victims. Another example would be, in a suspense novel, if we're trying to have a big twist at the end, Multi-POV might not be the best choice because the more information we allow our reader to gather from multiple perspectives, the easier it's going to be for them to guess the big twist. We're also going to want to consider the voice of our characters. If you have a protagonist who is a raving asshole 90% of the time, following him in first person might not be very enjoyable for a lot of readers, and maybe he's best in small doses, so omniscient narration, or kind of slightly less than close third person would be ideal for a protagonist like that. The structure of our narrative is also a very important consideration. If we're using a bunch of flashbacks, I would wager that we really want to use uh, the POV that is going to make us most invested in the characters involved in that flashback. And that's going to probably be first person or third close. And then the last consideration, and this one should be obvious, but I'm going to say it, the tense and style that you write in is going to be the biggest consideration. You need to make sure that however many characters you follow, and however we're following them, whether it's first, second, third, omniscient, whatever, you need to make sure that you can keep it consistent and do it well and be engaging. If you can't do present tense and keep your prose engaging and flowing well, maybe you need to switch to past tense. If you can't do third person narration, but when you write second person and you address the audience, your prose seem to flow better, maybe writing second person is your niche. These are things to consider, and I would highly recommend putting serious thought into them before you make big decisions like what POV you're going to write your entire story in. And so guys, there you have it. That is the meat and potatoes of the argument. If there's something that I missed that you think we should have talked about, if there's something that you want to give me your two cents on, please leave it in the comments. I'd love to discuss it with you. See you next time.